Hello, Brian Gibbons here. Welcome to this brief tutorial video where we're going to talk about how you can do uh, a type of PCR called tailed PCR uh, and use that to help facilitate the cloning of a particular sequence of interest. Uh, in this case, we're going to use the HBB gene into a vector of your choice. and We're going to use a particular plasmid. Now, the very first step, if you haven't already done this, we're going to make use of a program that I really like that's called A Plasmid Editor. So you should go to the A Plasmid Editor website and download that if you've not already done so. You can see they have versions for Windows, for Macs, and for Mac OS 10, I believe. Um, there's all that good stuff over there. And there are also directions here uh, and elsewhere that describe more about what it can do and how to use it. And we'll be talking about some of that today. Uh, but download that program, and then step one of this process is we're going to capture the sequence of our insert and of our, our vector. So uh, starting off, let's do the insert first. We talked about how we're going to be working with the HBB uh, gene. This is a gene you are, maybe are familiar with from class. So I've just loaded up the NCBI page here, and you can see um, I'm going to just type in HBB right there. Very simple. And if I click this button on the left, I can scroll down and select what database I'd like to search. And your first instinct might be to go to the gene page. And you can find some helpful information there. But I think for our purposes, because we care more about raw sequence type stuff today, uh, it's a little bit better to go to the nucleotide page. So I'm going to go to the nucleotide page and hit search. And you see we have a large number of hits. There's some 4,000 different nucleotide <laughs> sequences we found. But we only care about one of those. Uh, and you can see here there's sort of the smart thing at the top where it kind of has a sense that this is probably what we're looking for because one of the more common things searched, and that is the HBB human, uh, human uh, hemoglobin uh, beta. And that is, in fact, what we're looking for. And you can see we have different versions of that. We can look at the protein if we want, uh, genomic DNA if we want to, uh, or if we care more, we can specifically go for the transcript. Um, so it's important to make sure that you find the right sequence in the right organism in order to do what you want. So I'm going to click transcript here. Um, and the reason I'm going to choose transcript is because uh, typically for cloning experiments, uh, one of the goals is going to be to express our sequence of interest at some point, which means it's going to be transcribed and translated um, after that into a protein. Uh, and when you're expressing it, it's, it's generally good to get rid of those pesky introns if you don't need them, just because they tend to be rather large, uh, and it makes your cloning a lot easier to not have to deal with them. So I'm going to go click Transcript here. This should load up soon. And one thing to note here is make sure you're looking at the right species. So in this case, we are, in fact, looking at a um, uh, human version of this particular gene. Now, if you wanted to uh, use other versions of this gene, you can hit the back button and see over here on the right, there's a top organisms tree. Uh, you can uh, hit these buttons to expand that out and get sequences from any organism that they have on record. But we're going to stick with the human one. Uh, and this is the nucleotide page, which at first seems kind of um, maybe, it, it's not intuitively obvious how you're supposed to use this page. But a lot of these pages you can see, you can scroll down. And in fact, we're going to scroll down quite a ways. There's a lot of information on this page about what other um, people have published about this gene. Uh, we don't care so much about that. This features section kind of displays in almost a coded form um, what we're looking at. In fact, this is going to have essentially 626 uh, bases in it uh, in this particular gene. It tells you where the exons are, and you can actually mark them out if you really care. Um, not super important for our information for what we're doing right now. Um, we're going to scroll down here. You can see I actually just passed um, what is the translated version of this protein over here. Uh, and actually, one helpful note is this CDS stands for the coding region or the coding sequence. Uh, and that will become important later. So that tells you which part um, of this particular transcript is, is going to be coding. So we're going to scroll down here. And here we have our sequence. Um, what I'm going to do is copy that sequence. I'm going to hit Control-C on my computer because I'm using a PC, but you can copy it using any way you like. Um, and then, actually, what I've already done here is I've, I've opened up this program here called APE. Why don't I just redo this so it's even uh, more obvious. Uh, I'm going to open up the APE program. 
Uh, and it looks just like this. And what I'm going to do is just paste that in here. I'm going to hit Control V to paste my sequence, and then I have my, the full sequence that I'm looking at. And again, you might choose a different sequence. That's completely fine. Uh, if you were looking for something a little bit different, or you wanted um, more of the genomic region surrounding this, you could, you could do that easily. Uh, but in this case, uh, what we're interested in is um, trying to express this. So identifying where the coding region is is important. Uh, and if you remember on the nucleotide page, if we scroll up a little bit, what you can see is where it says um, CDS right here, it said that the coding sequence is between uh, 51 and 494. So what we're going to do is we're going to label that. And the way we're going to do that is to go into Edit on top uh, and say Select From and To right here, which you can also get to by Control-Shift-A if you can remember that. Uh, and I'm going to select that exact sequence. So we're going to do uh, C51, uh, and it was to 494, 494. OK, beautiful. That is the sequence that actually is encoding the protein. You can see that it starts with an ATG here. Hopefully you can see that. And it ends with a TAA, which is a stop codon. So that, that's good. This really tells us what our frame is and the, the coding region that we're looking for. I'm going to right click on this and introduce a new feature here uh, where we label things. So I'm going to hit New Feature on this menu. Again, I just right clicked to get to here. I click New Feature, and we're just going to call this HBB Coding Region. Uh, and if you want to, you can pick a color from this big list of colors. I kind of like that blue, so we're going to keep that. Uh, I'm going to hit OK. And now when I click anywhere, that'll be labeled. Uh, and if I mouse over it, you can see in the middle of the screen, kind of in this region here, uh, it'll actually say whatever that particular labeled sequence is. So here it is. That's the HBB Coding Region. So that's step one. Uh, bef uh, before we finish this step, we have to save it. So we're going to save this as HPB transcript. We'll just save that to the desktop for simplicity. Uh, so now let's go get our vector sequence, shall we? We're going to go um, onto a particular vendor website. Usually the vectors will be on a, a website trying to sell them to you. And the one we're using for this example is PCDNA 3.1 and it just comes from Life Technologies. And what you're seeing here is this actually says vectors um, because there are several different vectors on this page. It's not uncommon for the distributor to make several flavors, if you will, of their vectors that are mostly the same, but they have slight differences. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about what some of those differences are. We're going to scroll down beyond the price and catalog number. We don't care about that. We want to get to the section about manuals on this particular site. Different vendors will have this displayed a little bit differently, but you'll kind of get a sense for how to find it. I'll click on Manuals, and we're going to scroll down again a little bit to where it says Vector Information right here at the top, Vector Information. And you see there's four separate variants of this particular vector. Um, they all have um, Mick and his tags at the end. Uh, and those are, uh, if you don't know what a tag is, a tag is a... Um, going to be ultimately it's going to be a sequence of amino acids that's on one end of your protein or the other and that's going to help to easily purify uh, or identify your protein so it's, you can easily tell if you've achieved what you you've set out to achieve if you actually have expression of that protein in other words and on the right you can see we have vector maps uh, polylinkers this tells you what restriction enzyme sites are in the multiple cloning region that's kind of another another word for polylinker, um, and I think it's a more commonly used word. I don't know why they use polylinker here. Um, and there's some sequence information that we're going to grab that in just a second to get our raw sequence. And then there's this restriction enzyme site information. I don't think this is particularly useful for you, so I would ignore that. Um, we have to decide which, which version of these we want. The very first version I'm going to skip because this is involved in blue-white screening. It has a LAC-Z gene right in the middle of that multiple cloning site. So if you don't remember what blue-white screening is or have not encountered it before, you might want to look that up before you consider um, using that type of thing. It's mostly there as a way of quickly identifying if you have um, the, a transformant that has the insert in the proper spot. These other vectors have different tags here. There's his A, his B, his C. They're all the same, but I, th I believe they're in slightly different frames, um, and that can influence 
um, how you do your cloning. So if you realize later that your tags are in the wrong frame, you might want to go back and look at you know the other two options to see if you can um, keep your strategy but just change your vector and and um, avoid any problems. So we're just going to start here and say for simplicity we'll pick the first one and we're going to go to where it says sequence here and click that and this is the sequence so I'm going to hit control A to copy all of that excuse me control A selects it all control C copies it I'm going to go into um, Ape and go to file new and it will open a nice new window if I have one window saved already I'm going to hit control V to paste it and then I'm going to file save and I'm going to save this as the name of the vector, and this was pcdna.1 uh, mic, oops, mic dash his a, and I'll save that to my desktop too. Now you see this sequence is much longer. This is a plasmid. We're going to put our sequence in at some point, and currently it isn't very exciting. Uh, so in order to make this more useful to us, what we're going to want to do is label some of the parts so we can kind of tell where we are in the plasmid. Because uh, if we actually, there's even a button here where if I hit this button, it shows a map. Uh, oops, well actually, um, let's see, we have to make it circular first. So if we make our vector circular and hit the map um, and then kind of blow up this window, we'll see, wow, we have a circle. That's about 5.5 KB in size. Um, nothing is labeled. If we start labeling things in our sequence, it'll show up on the vector very nicely. So we want to do that next. Uh, we're going to go back into um, this page, and we're going to click on Vector Map. I'll show you what that is. This is kind of what we're going to create. We're going to create our own version of this map. Uh, and this map tells you where things are located on the vector, including the multiple cloning site, with all the restriction enzyme sites that we might want to use, which are right here. T7 is a promoter that um, is upstream. CMV is a different promoter. Um, the tags here are the MIC epitope and the 6S 6x his tag at the end, uh, and then this termination is a stop codon. It looks, looks even like a stop sign. We have some ampicillin resistance genes. We have some neomycin resistance genes. These are selectable markers on the plasmid. Um, lots of good stuff. So what I would suggest you do next, and maybe do this on your own here, is to actually look at this list here below where it says um, what's actually present here. What are the contents of this vector? And add these features to your plasmid. And I'll do the first one with you so you can see it. So we, let's say we want to add the CMV promoter. That's from 209 to 863. So we're going to do just what we did before. Go to Edit. Select from and to. 209 to 863. Check. And then we right click. Go to New Feature. And we'll type in CMV promoter. Just like so. And you can make it any color you want. If you want, sometimes I think promoters are kind of like where things start. So I go, oh, maybe that'll be kind of green, green for go. We'll do that. Um, and now if we look back at our map, we have one thing labeled. Look at that. There's our promoter. It tells you right where it is. So um, maybe pause the video at this point. If you're following along, add in the rest of these features so you can have a good sense for what's in uh, what's in your particular plasmid. There we go. You can see I've added in um, several additional features here uh, onto our plasmid. And I haven't added all of them. So if your vector has a few more, that's fine. But I've added the multiple cloning sites and the origins of replication. So that, that's really good. Uh, importantly here, this multiple cloning site where we're going to put our gene here is labeled in yellow. So we're going to move on to doing that stuff next because we're going to have to identify um, kind of the important restriction enzyme sites in here. Now if we go back up to our map, you can see those are labeled for you. Everything in the multiple cloning site is a unique cutter. It will only cut the vector in one spot, which is great. You don't want to accidentally cut your vector up into pieces. Uh, and then what we're going to do is actually, why don't we label those, or at least some of those that we might want to use, on our um, diagram. So we'll go back to here. I'm actually going to hit save. If you haven't done that, it's a good idea to save your vector. Uh, and go into enzymes, and we're going to do Let's see here. Enzyme selector right here. And this allows us to pick lots of different enzymes. Um, here is Hindi 3, for example, right here. And it has a 1 next to it. That 1 indicates it only cuts once. Um, and in fact, I think, oh, actually, we're not going to do it that way. Um, I'm going to select that one. We also have 
um, a BAM H1 there, that's a common one. Let's pick that one there. Um, we'll have maybe Eco R1. And if you want to, you can pick all the ones that are in that list. I'm kind of just going through some of the ones uh, in that list. There's Eco R5, um, Not1. Uh, the ones I'm selecting, I'm picking mainly because I've used them before, uh, and they tend to be a little bit more common, perhaps, in, in laboratory settings. But that's not to say that you have to use those particular ones. There's not one. Uh, ZO1 is going to be at the end. These are displayed in alphabetical order. And I think that's probably fine for now. So what we're going to do is just hit this button that says Highlight. And if we scroll up into our plasmid vector here, we see that now those are highlighted in red. Um, so if I highlight over it with the mouse, it says MCS, which is part of the multiple cloning site, and it says that's where the HIN3 enzyme cuts. This one next to it, that's BAMH1. That's where BAMH1 cuts. The one on the end here is ZO1. That's where that one is going to cut. Um, so th that can be very useful for figuring out your next steps of cloning. So I'm going to hit save again before that gets messed up somehow. Uh, and then I think we're ready to go on to our next step where we actually try to get some primers made for our sequence of interest. So what we're going to do is go to Google here and we're going to type in primer blast and hit the first link that comes up. Now this is um, really kind of the purpose of what we're doing. We're trying to do a PCR reaction that enables us to clone a gene um, from I guess in this case, uh, probably a cDNA um, transcript uh, into a vector. That's, th that's our goal. Um, so we're going to make a bunch of copies of it and make copies in such a way that we can easily clone them. And the way we clone things is typically with restriction enzymes. I'm going to select our sequence. This is our HBB sequence again. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it back into this program. And if you want to expand this box a little bigger, you're welcome to kind of looks maybe nicer to see the whole thing. And this section on the right is pretty important. It asks you where you want those primers to be located. Uh, and what you do is you basically make sure those primers are going to be flanking or surrounding the area you want. What's the area you want? Well, it's this blue area. You want the coding region to be there for sure. And if you remember, um, well, actually, let's say, let's, let's, say, let's say you don't remember where this was. Um, you can right click and say edit feature in the coding region and it will tell you it's from 51 to 494. So I think what we want is primers to be anywhere before that, so anywhere from 1 to 50, uh, and anywhere from 495 um, to the end. And we can find the end easily. Oops, wrong one. Where did it? Here it is. You see our whole sequence is 626 nucleotides, so we'll just do it to that 626. Uh, and there are many different parameters you may decide to adjust in here if you have a specific size you're looking for or um, specific melting temperatures you want. There's some suggestions online and on some of the um, class materials too for what you might put in for some of these numbers uh, based on what are known to typically work well. For now, I'm going to just trust that the program will know what it's doing, and I'm going to hit Get Primers down here at the bottom of this button. And depending on how busy it is, and also how many people are using it, um, and the time of day, and a lot of other things, <laughs> what stars are in alignment, um, this can be really fast, or sometimes it takes a little while. You just have to kind of wait and see how long it takes. Uh, I've done it where it's come up almost immediately, and I've also had to wait, you know, five, ten minutes on, on rare occasions for it to come up. But the average wait time is probably about um, two to three minutes, I would say. So what I'm going to do is pause the video now while we're waiting, and then just show you what comes up. Okay, so we're back. So now you can see um, it didn't take terribly long. It, it was less than two minutes for this, this to come up. Uh, it tells you, you know, what you entered here, the range, that kind of stuff up there. And I want to scroll down slightly. And what Primer Blast is doing is it's identifying pairs of primers that will work well together um, based on a lot of different sort of mathematical rules about what things typically tend to work. And that involves secondary structure and other, other kind of molecular details we're not going to get into, but the program found them for us. We didn't have to do anything. We just hit go. The program found them. You can see the primer pairs are shown as arrows. Um, remember that 
there's one primer that binds on each of the two strands of DNA that is double stranded. It almost looks like they're both binding to the same strand here. I just want to point out that's not what's happening. That's a very common misconception. Uh, but you can see because of that range that we put in, almost all of this middle region that we really care about um, is is present. And I guess all of it is present because that, that's specifically what we asked for. And you can see we have a lot of different options for where the primers are going to be located. And you really are free to pick almost any of these you want. I think I'm kind of leaning towards picking this, first, this second uh, primer pair here, this primer, primer set two, only because it's making the shortest product. And as long as that has everything we need in it, I think that's probably good for it to be a little bit shorter. So the actual sequences, those are listed down here, along with some of the details about them, including their length and their melting temperature. So if you were going to set up a PCR reaction, you would take that into account when you're setting up your reaction. I'm going to go down here and look at primer pair two. And we see that we have a forward primer and a reverse primer sequence given here. And what I'm going to do is actually just copy the forward primer, hit control C, um, and then go back to my transcript. And I'm going to search for it because it should be here, right? Let's go to edit and we will go to find the binoculars, type in our sequence. Um, and there are some options here, which, uh, including this one, says also find the reverse complement of the strain. Uh, that's a great one for the reverse primer, which will be in the opposite orientation. So that one should probably be checked. Uh, and I'm going to say find next. And there is only, in fact, one of these right here. I'm going to right click on it. Oops. I think I have to exit out of the find. Uh, right click on it, add a new feature, and I will just call this forward primer. You can even give it a name if you like, call it HBB Forward Primer 1 or something like that, in case you have more than one. And let's make it a different color. It's a primer, so we'll go purple. Purple will be primers. You can make your own color scheme if you don't like purple. Uh, now we'll do the same thing with the reverse primer. We're going to select that, like so. And what we're doing here is we're really just marking where um, these primers are in relation to the sequence we want. You can see they flank it pretty closely. New feature, and this will be reverse primer. And make it purple, just like the other one. Perfect. Great. We're making we're making fantastic progress. So um, we're gonna save this. Is something else. So th this is our transcript. And first of all, I'll save it with the primaries marked on it. So I'll hit save. And then I'm going to save it as something else. I'm going to save it as, instead of transcript, we're going to call this our PCR product. This is the result of PCR. And what PCR is going to make is everything between the primers. So I'm going to delete everything upstream of that. And I'm going to delete everything downstream of that. This is basically deleting the untranslated region. And that is our PCR product. So good, good. We're getting in real good shape here. Um, but what we haven't done is enabled us to easily add, um, we, we haven't easily added any restriction enzyme sites here. So what I'm going to do is to go to the enzyme selector here. And you can see there's some that appear to already be selected. These are the ones that we chose for ourselves before. And I'm just going to hit the highlight button. And you can see two of them we're not going to be able to use because they cut in the middle of our insert. So we can't use BAMH1. That would be bad. So no BAMH1. Uh, and we can't use EcoR1. So those are a couple of the most common two enzymes that we actually normally like to use. But for this example, we cannot use either of those. So let's go back to our file here where we had our um, multiple cloning site and see what our other options are. I, I would propose that we go for a Hindi 3 at the beginning, because we get to design primers any way we want. They're very cheap and customizable because a computer will, uh, or not a computer, but a machine will synthesize them for us. And then we'll go on to the tail end, and I think maybe Zoan would be good. That, that'll get rid of the entire multiple cloning site, get rid of all that extra sequence we don't care about. That would be perfect. Uh, and we can see here that the Hindi 3 site is A-A-G-C-T-T. -T. So what I'm going to do is just copy that sequence and hit copy. 
And I'm going to put that in front of my purple primer up here. And then what I'm going to do is go to the other end and grab this um, ZO sequence, which is CTCGAG. So it starts here. Copy that and put it at the, other, the end of my other primer. Now, what's important to note here is that um, technically this purple sequence that's shown here that I'm kind of highlighting is will not have the same sequence as the primer. It's going to be complementary to the primer because, of course, the actual DNA would be double-stranded. Uh, so just, just remember that. These um, restriction enzyme sites are going on the five prime ends of both primers. So always at the, the five prime end of the primer. And that puts them, as you can see, at the very end of our PCR products. This is great. Um, the one final thing I'm going to do, uh, and, and this is just kind of a little molecular biology tip for you, is that if we made this PCR product as it's shown, the, the cut sites would be on the very, very tips of that PCR product. And sometimes restriction enzymes don't like to cut so close to the end of a sequence. So what I'm going to do is just add three bases, CGC, onto each end, like so, CGC, like that. Uh, and what that will do is it'll make it'll improve the odds that those restriction enzymes will cut better. Uh, you can see I typed in the sequence that I added in all caps. The original was in lowercase, so if you want to do that, that's, that's a fine way to distinguish them. And the primers that we're going to order from the company um, are this whole thing here, including that restriction site we added and those little extra bases on the end. Those are, that stuff is called the tails. Um, of the PCR primers because it's not complementary to anything in the actual transcript. So the very first time these primers bind, that part is not going to bind to the template DNA because there's nothing corresponding to that in the template DNA. Um, but the advantage is after it goes through enough rounds of PCR replication, it's going to be there right where we want and right where we need it. Um, so. Um, if you were going to order a PCR primer, that's what you would order um, for this one. I'll actually even add a new feature here. We'll color it. Um, I don't even know what color to make this. How about orange? We'll do, let's color it orange. Uh, and this will be board primer one. Okay. And the reverse primer is going to be the, the reverse complement of the sequence over here. Board primer 2. And that will also be orange. Um, so this, the sequence you would literally send off to the um, company to order this is the sequence of forward primer 1 just as it's shown. And if you want to get the, the forward primer 2, or actually, did I label that forward primer 2? <laughs> Oops, I'm going to change that. It's supposed to be reverse primer 2. Reverse primer 2, like so. Um, you'll send in the reverse complement of this orange. You won't send directly that sequence. You'll send in the reverse complement of it. And there's actually ways to get that. If you play around with some of these, these buttons up here, you can actually easily get that sequence. Uh, or, of course, you could manually do it as well. Uh, but that's what we want. We're going to go back and highlight our enzymes again because our highlights went away when we colored those orange. Uh, final step here, final step in the sequence. We are so close to being done with our cloning. Um, I'm going to hit save and then I'm going to copy everything between the two restriction sites we chose on the end. So we're going to ultimately digest this. This is our PCR product, right? And when we digest it, you know, some of the end here is going to get clipped off and some of this end is going to get clipped off. Uh, but the easiest way to do this is just to copy the entire restriction site from one all the way to the other, like so, and hit copy. Uh, and then we're going to go into our vector, and we're going to highlight that same region between those two sites. So here we have Hindi 3, so we're going to highlight that site and everything in between that and the other site, which was on the very other end here, our ZOE 1 site was right here. Um, and I'm just going to hit Control V to paste it. Paste. And that is now looking very good. This is this is what we want. I'm going to actually save this as 
uh, something else. This is not just the vector anymore. This is our vector with HPV inserts. Uh, and if we go back to our map, which, by the way, if you click this map, it doesn't update itself. Um, so you have to manually hit that map button again if you made any changes. You get a fairly nice looking diagram. There's some settings options that you can, you know, maybe change this so it looks better. But if you blow it up, you can see your whole beautiful plasmid and your gene of interest is right there where you want it to be. This is this is fantastic. Uh, this is very good. Um, that's basically all there is to it. Now, the the last thing that you might want to do um, is to find out if any of those tags we put on in the end are actually in frame with our protein. So let's do that. Now. Okay, so how do you go about translating the sequence? You basically just go right in here into ORFs, which is Open Reading Frames, and you translate it. You'll click Control T after you've selected that sequence you want to translate. I've selected the entire sequence we put in, along with those two pink regions, which are the tags, the MIC tag and the HIS tag. We're going to hit Translate, and you can do some options here, but I'm going to leave it as what it defaults to. And hit OK. Uh, and what we see here is the exact translation like we saw on the website for our particular gene of interest, which is great. And what's not so great is I can already tell you from looking at this is that these tags are not in the proper frame. Uh, and the way that you can do that is there's a couple different ways. Um, I would basically um, look to see what these tags should translate as. That, that's one way. So this last one here is the easy one. This is a his tag. I'm going to translate that, and this should, if it's if it's in a frame, should be all histidine. So it makes a bunch of H's, right? Six H's in a row. You're not seeing any six H's in a row here. That means that this is out of frame. And in fact, before we get there, before we get to the end, there are these stop codons that are present. See those? Um, so this is not in frame. Um, so really, the only change you you would probably want to do this again with one of the other vectors. Um, you know, the mchis. B or C instead of A, and, the, and one of those will put these in frame. Or the other thing you could do is if you cut with a different restriction enzyme, a lot of times that can get you into a different frame too. So it does take a little putzing around, and, and I will admit this is a challenging process, but I totally believe you can do it. Just put your mind to it, and, and you can totally do it. Uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask me or look for more help online. Uh, and just reconsult this video. You can watch it as many times as you like, and and double check any of those details that are easy to, to miss or forget about. So uh, hopefully that helps you and uh, have a great rest of your day.